identities, okay? The Pythagorean identities. Now, the reason why they are named the Pythagorean identities is because they are derived from the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I've got an illustration here that has a right triangle set up in the first quadrant. This would work in any quadrant. It's just easiest to work in the first quadrant. Okay, I have the sides labeled A, B, and C, C being the hypotenuse, A and B being the legs. Theta is where it normally is, formed there with the positive x-axis. Now, we know that the Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, well, let's put a trig spin on this, okay? We're going to turn this into some trig. So, on our unit circle, the x-coordinate represents what trig ratio? The cosine. So that means I'm going to say, well, this leg right here is the cosine of theta because in our unit circle, our hypotenuse or our radius is 1, so the x is cosine, the y is sine. So when I substitute these things into the Pythagorean theorem, we get a squared, we're replacing a with sine, so that's sine squared of theta plus b is cosine, so that becomes cosine squared of theta. And C was 1, so 1 squared is just 1. Now, this is the Pythagorean identity. The fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. This works for any angle. Let me show you what this means. Um, if I pick some angle, I don't know, somebody pick a really random angle. I think I heard 37 first, 37, 27, 37, okay, doesn't matter, either one, okay, they're both kind of out there. So, the way I'm going to type this into my calculator is I'm going to put parentheses, then I'm going to put sine, let's go with 37, okay, uh, the first parentheses that are closed were for the angle, then I've got to close parentheses around the trig ratio because I'm squaring it. Okay, this is not something you're going to have to do. I'm just showing you how this identity works, okay? Um, and then do the cosine and square it. It equals 1, okay? It does not matter what I pick this angle to be. It can be negative 2, okay? It can be an angle of negative 2, um, but when we square the sine ratio, square the cosine ratio and add those together, the result is always 1, okay? It's always true. So we're going to use that quite a bit. Now, there are actually two other expressions that are direct results of this. I can manipulate this equation so that instead of 1 being on a side by itself, I can manipulate this so that um, sine squared is on a side by itself. And we can achieve that by just moving the cosine squared over, okay? To move it requires subtraction, okay? So that is another form we may need to use of this. And then we could do the same thing and isolate cosine squared by moving the sine squared using subtraction. So we can say that the cosine squared of an angle is equal to 1 minus the sine squared of an angle. So this also means that if we knew the cosine of an angle, we don't necessarily have to know what the angle is. We could use uh, that first green expression there to figure out what the sine of the angle is, okay, without even knowing the angle. Okay, now... Um, there are a couple more versions of this, and I don't want you to look at it from the perspective. There are actually nine total, but I don't want you to look at it from the perspective of I need to memorize all nine of these because they're all direct results of each other. So as long as you know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, you can come up with all the other ones. All right, so let me show you where the other ones come from. I'm just going to rewrite the original so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Laws of mathematics say that if you do something 
to uh, one side of the equation, as long as you do it to the other side of the equation, you're okay. You're within, within your bounds. So I am going to divide everything in this expression by sine squared of theta. Okay? I know it looks a little weird, but just stick with it. Okay? So, sine squared divided by sine squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. Okay? Now, I know it's squared, but cosine squared over sine squared can be replaced with cotangent squared. Because cosine over sine is cotangent, as long as they're both squared, then you can say that it's equal to cotangent squared. Similarly, with the 1 over sine squared, we can rewrite that. 1 over sine is cosecant, so 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. This is another form of the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 is the original but we can manipulate it so that it's a, it involves cotangent and cosecant. And we can uh, move things around here just like we did with the other one. We can subtract the cotangent squared from both sides so that we have an expression equal to 1. Cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is equal to 1. We could also isolate the cotangent squared by moving the 1. So cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1. So there's three more. We've got six total. We've got three more to go. I'm going to do the same thing that I did right here, dividing by sine. And what do you think I'm going to divide by this time? Cosine. Yep, I'm going to divide by cosine. So I'm going to go back to my original. And I'm going to divide everything by cosine squared. Okay, when we do that, sine over cosine is tangent, so that's tangent squared theta. Cosine over cosine is 1, and 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So I can also come up with two more. I can isolate tangent. Or I can come up with an expression that's equal to 1. So there are the nine Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared is the original, and the others are just direct results of that. Alright, now, this is not something necessarily that you have to do. Um, but I do, again, I'll say I, I encourage you not to look at this as I need to memorize these nine equations. But really, if you know the main three, the, the ones that are wrote in green are just manipulations of those. Um, so a couple of things that I want to point out. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. I think it's easy to remember. But remembering these others takes a little bit more. Um, but... The cos are paired together. Cotangent, cosecant, they're paired together in the equation. The other one is tangent and secant. All right? And then also it's uh, 1 plus cotangent, 1 plus tangent. So the, the tangents, either a regular tangent or cotangent, on the side plus 1. Okay? Now, you could switch this order right here. You could write that 1 plus tangent squared. I just wrote it that way because of how I was deriving them. Um, but y'all know you can flip. Okay? So that's one way to kind of help you remember those. Alright, now, here's how we're actually going to use these. 
First of all, we got some guidelines for proving trig identities. Okay, uh, you are only allowed to work on one side of the equal sign. Okay, this is not an equation that you're solving for a variable. You're not going to move things from one side or the other. You got to pick one side and you, you just work on that side. Um, the first thing that you always want to look for is do I have any of my Pythagorean identities? If not, then I need to try and rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine because that's going to help me get to where I want to go. Alright, so those are kind of our guidelines. They're not really rules or steps, they're just kind of guidelines to keep in the back of our mind. Um, I do not think these are not the examples on the back of your sheet. Separate examples, so we'll need to write these on the front with your notes. Okay, so we are going to try and prove, and we use theta and x kind of interchangeably sometimes. Y shows up in there, okay, the variable itself really doesn't matter. We are trying to prove that the secant of some angle x minus the tangent of some angle x times the sine of that same angle x. Try to prove that all that boils down to what are the secant of x. Okay. Try to prove that all that stuff on the left side is just the same thing as 1 divided by the secant. So, we can only work on one side of the equal sign. We're going to work on the left side. Because the left side is the one that's more complicated, it's, more, it's got stuff that we can actually manipulate. Really, the only thing we can do to the right side of this one is we could rewrite that as cosine. But that's not getting us any clo anywhere closer to secant and tangent and sine and all that stuff. Okay? Um, so, we're going to work on the left side. Look for Pythagorean identities. Well, I don't see anything that's square, so that's kind of out the window. So, we're left with the idea to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So, here we go. Secant can be rewritten as what? 1 over cosine. Minus tangent can be rewritten as sine of x over cosine of x. And sine of x there is already in terms of sine. Okay. Now, we're not touching the right side, so I'm just going to keep bringing that down. I'm going to leave it in black so you know that I'm not changing that at all. It's just following me down through my process here. Okay, now, um, if you remember a little bit about fractions, when we multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So the 1 over cosine of x has got to stay there for a second. If we multiply sine of x times sine of x, well, what's something times itself? It's squared, right? Okay, so this is sine squared of x. The x is not squared. You never change the angle inside the trig function. Okay, it's sine of x squared. And cosine times 1 is just cosine. Okay, we're still trying to turn this into 1 over secant. Okay, now, now we're subtracting two fractions, 1 over cosine minus sine squared over cosine. Well, if they have the same denominator, right, we're just allowed to combine their numerators. Well, we can't actually combine 1 and secant squared, but we can write that as 1 minus sine squared. I think I just said secant squared. I meant to say sine squared. And we just put it over a single denominator. We're almost there. Do you all have any questions? Any good so far? Okay. Now, what do we know that 1 minus sine squared is equal to? Yes, ma'am.
So, who do we know one minus sine squared is equal to? 